Zelda Breath of the Wild is one of the best games ever created, and the most memorable thing about it is its graphics, and especially the tune shader they used in the game. So in today's video I'll show you step by step how to create that shader graph in Unity Engine. This is Rames Altapa from Binary Lunar and let's get started. The shader graph I'll show you is built using an article published by Royston, so I give all the credits to him. So in today's video we will not only learn how to create shader graph but also how to convert a coded shader into nodes. So one of the first things that related to Zelda's shader is the following three main aspects, which are two-tone shading, a rim lighting, and a spectral reflection. So let's start by creating a new Unity project and let's name it Zelda's Tune Shader Graph and make sure to select the Universal Render Pipeline template to start with it. Once the default scene is loaded, let's bring the 3D model which we'll be using in this project, Princess Zelda. And I found that uh, 3D model in the Sketchfab website, which is, is a great source to get 3D models. So in order to properly import the, their assets, you need their plugin for Unity. So I'll provide the link in the description. It's called Sketchfab plugin for Unity. So download that. Then go to Assets, Import, Package, and select that imported Sketchfab Unity plugin. Now you'll find a new window called Sketchfab. Click on it, then browse Sketchfab and select the 3D model you want to import. From there, I imported the Princess Zelda. When you import the 3D model, you'll notice that it's totally pink, and that's because the materials are not upgraded to work with the Universal Render Pipeline. So go to Edit, Render Pipeline, and upgrade the materials to fit the Universal Render Pipeline. Let's remove the example assets and reposition the camera and resize the 3D model to be in the middle of the screen. But I didn't like the fog here, so let's go to Window, Rendering Lighting, and disable the fog from there. Now let's go to the materials of the Zelda model and change the shader for all its materials to Universal Render Pipeline Unlit because we will use only shader graph and we will configure the lightning in a special way. Let's create our shader graph now. Right click Create Shader Unlit Graph and let's name it Zelda's Tune Shader. For this shader graph, we need the data that give us the information about the directional light in the scene. And for that, we will create a custom node that has a chunk of code, which give us the information about the directional light, its color, its direction, and more properties. Let's see how to get it. So let's create custom function node and for that, we'll use a code provided by Unity themselves to access the directional light in the scene. I provided the link to download the custom light down in the description. Once you downloaded the custom lighting script, add it to the source in the custom function and it, it will auto detect the script inside it. Now we need to set the input and output of the custom function and make sure to copy exactly the same names of the parameters for the outputs, which are the direction, color, distance, attenuation, and chateau attenu attenuation. And for the input, we just need a vector three called world position. If you entered everything correctly, you'll see the custom node colored with yellow. And to expose the parameter, just hit the arrow on the top right of the node. But we need just a position node which represent the position of each vertice in the 3D model. So the first step is to calculate the amount of light received by the surface from the main directional light. The amount of light is proportional to the direction or normal of the surface with respect to the light direction. To calculate that easily, we will use the dot product node, which will return the value 1, which means the maximum lightning when both the light direction and the normal of the vertices in the same direction or parallel, we can say. 
and we get zero value, which means uh, darkness or shadow area when the two uh, normals or two vectors are perpendicular. So back to our shader, we need a normal vector node which represents the direction of each vertice of the 3D model and we normalize that to get the direction, not the value of it. Then as we explained, we use a dot product node to calculate the amount of light received for each point based on the direction of the light and the normal. To distinguish this value, we can group all those three nodes and name them n dot l, which means normal dot product light direction as named in the article we are following. Then if we link the n dot l to the color in the master node, we will start seeing the shading applied to the 3D model. But first we need to tell the materials to use the new shader we created to so go to Zelda's model materials and change the shader to the Zelda tune shader we just created. You see now we can get shaded models based on the light direction without the textures because we need now to add sample texture 2D node and also create texture 2D property and make sure to set the reference underscore main text so it auto detects the texture on each game object or each part of the model. Then using the sample texture 2D, link the texture 2D to it. Then multiply the n.l with the value of the sample texture 2D to get the textures from the materials. And as you can see now, we only reached a normal shading to any 3D model. But to get the tune effect, we need to create distinct two areas of shading without any gradual transition between them. And to reach that, we need a smooth step node, which eliminates the fading between bright and dark. So create smooth step node, then set the value of both edge one and edge two to 0 0.001. Now we can see two shades, but the dark area is totally black. So we need to color that using a main color and ambient color. And for the ambient color, make sure to set the mode to HDR. The smooth step node represents the light intensity. So let's label it as light intensity. Then we need to multiply the color of the directional light with this light intensity. The ambient light represents the light that bounces off the surfaces of the object in the area and is scattered in the atmosphere. So we will model that as a light that affects all the surfaces equally and is additive to the main directional light. So we need to add the ambient light using an add node to the results from the last multiply node. Then we multiply that with the main color. Make sure to choose the pure white color for the main color and for the ambient color choose a darker grade of the white color so we can notice the difference in the scene. Now we can multiply the main color with the additive ambient light. Then we link the results to the multiply with the texture 2D. Hit save and now in the scene we can do nicely two shaded areas, one light and one dark as in the Zelda's tune shader. Next step is creating the specular reflection, which is a distant reflection made by the light source. This reflection is view dependent in that it is affected by the angle that the surface is viewed at. And for that we need a view direction node. Also the specular reflection have two properties, the specular color and the glossiness. So let's add those two properties in the shader graph. The specular color tints the reflection and the glossiness controls the size of the reflection. The strength of the specular reflection is defined by the dot product between the normal of the surface and the half vector. And what is the half vector? It's the vector between the viewing direction and the light source. And we can obtain that by summing 
those two vectors and then normalize the results. So let's calculate the half vector by adding the view direction to the direction of the light, then normalizing the results. Then we calculate the trends of the specular light by getting the dot product between the n dot l and the half vector. And to control the specular intensity, we need to power up the glossiness with the value of multiplying the n dot h value with the light intensity. Now we can see the specular reflection, but it is too smooth. And to make it sharp, we need a smooth step node and set the edge one value between 0 0.005 and the edge two 0 0.01. Then simply to control the specular reflection color, we multiply the results with the specular color node. I made a mistake that shows the specular reflection in the middle of the game object instead of the top right and that's because I forgot to normalize the view direction. To keep things organized, let's group all the nodes related to the specular reflection into specular light group. And finally, we need to add the specular light to the ambient color before multiplying them with the main color. Save and now you can start seeing the specular reflection on the model we have. You can control the glossiness and can also increase how vivid is the specular light by increasing the intensity in the color settings. Now we reach the final step which is creating the rim lighting. I found that rim lighting can be created using the Frenzel node. The rim lighting will need two properties. The first one is the rim color and the second one is the rim amount. For the rim color, set it to white and the mode to HDR and while for the rim amount, make it a vector one and a slider between zero and one and set the value to 0 0.7. Then we can create the rim intensity by using smooth step and setting the edge one and jet edge two using the rim amount after adding and deducting 0 0.01 from it. So for edge one, we add to the rim amount 0 0.01. For edge two, we subtract from the rim amount 0 0.01. And of course the input will be the Frenzel effect since I flipped the values, so let me just switch between adding and subtracting. But now we have two issues. The rim is on in the all directions and also we need to control the intensity or the amount of the rim. So to solve that, we need to multiply the Frenzel amount with the value of the light direction. After powering up the n.l with a new parameter called rim threshold, which is a slider between 0 and 1, and the default value is 0 0.1. And now we can see the rim in the right direction toward the light. After that, we can simply color the rim light by multiplying the results with the rim color. Let's keep things organized and clean by grouping all the nodes related to the rim light. And finally, we add the rim light to the results of adding the specular reflection to the ambient light. Then we multiply the results with the main color. And now we can change the rim amount, uh, the rim threshold and the rim color from the inspector. But now we have one final issue. If we created another game object, it doesn't cast shadows on the game objects that have the Zelda's Toon shader. As you can see, there is no shadow from the cylinder on the character, but the cylinder can receive the shadow from the character. So let's fix this. Let's go back to the shader graph. And in the custom node, let's change its precision from inherit to half. Then we simply need to multiply 
which is the shadow attenuation with the n dot l, then link it to the light intensity. And voila, now the game object can receive the shadow from any other game objects and acts normally in the 3D world. And that's it for today's video. We created the amazing Zelda's Toon Shader Graph that can be applied to any other game objects immediately. Simply drag any ready 3D model and change the shader on the materials to the new shader we created and you'll get the same amazing results on any other game objects. And of course you can control all the parameter we have created. You can change the main color, you can change the ambient color, you can change the specular color, you can adjust the glossiness, you can change the rim color, you can adjust the rim amount and threshold. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Special thanks to our supporters on Patreon, Sergey Makrushen, Fire Lumen, Pira Chun Bun Chum, Kev Tressler, Fu R T S Chaharbar, Alexis Bix, Dimitri Vasiliev, Bradman, Joshua Kratoshville, Parker Nelson, Giacomo Mariani, G Lee Fever, Jess Lee Beaver, Pedro, Jens Valentine, Rick Jabowski, and Jack Restel. Don't forget to join our Discord channel and of course you can download this project and all other projects we have worked on if you become a Patreon. Till next video, see you soon.